before you begin your three-dimensional sculpture, you might want to add some color to your cardboard before you do it so that it's not so plain and empty looking. Um, whatever piece of cardboard you choose is going to have sort of colors and prints on the other side, which is fine. That can be kind of fun. So think about the colors that are on this side and maybe try to do colors that kind of match it or are opposite of it. This piece of cardboard has a lot of purples and orangey yellow colors. Um, which are complementary colors. So I could do more purple and yellow this side or I could do some totally different colors if I wanted to. So when you add paint, um, whether it's watercolor or tempera or acrylic, the paper when it dries can sort of curl up and start bulging out. When it's a big piece, it's not too big of a deal. It'll usually dry flat again. But if you do that with lots of little pieces, sometimes they don't flatten out again. So that's why it's good to do any painting um, when it's a big piece, um, you could also use marker or any or crayon or anything else that's nice and bright. Or you could just leave it brown if you really don't want to do that. Or maybe just do some patterns with maybe a sharpie or something. So what I'm going to do is start first drawing some shapes on here that I think I'm going to be cutting. I'm going to be using. I'm going to try to use as much of the space as possible. Um, and then we will fill it in with some color. So you could do this with pencil first if you wanted. I'm going to be brave and jump right in with marker. Some of your shapes that you make could be geometric. That means that they are, uh, they have straight lines and points. So this shape right here, and you can see me outlining it. You don't have to outline like I am. I'm just outlining so you can see it. Here we have a nice triangle shape. From here I can kind of do a longer piece that comes off of here. Maybe I can do a square shape. So all these shapes I'm doing where I'm using straight lines and points, these are all geometric shapes. So I'm just going to keep creating some lines that are being made with straight lines and points. You could do this with the whole piece or just with certain parts of it. So I'm just going to keep drawing some lines. I'm going to try to not make my lines too crazy or zigzaggy because I don't want to make it too hard for me to cut out. So I'm going to do one more like this. Now I'm going to start doing some like curvy shapes. So I have a lot of geometric shapes down here that I can cut out. I think in the second half I'm going to do the opposite which is organic shapes. Organic shapes are shapes that are curvy. They're kind of shapes that you make up. They're not anything that's real. They're just made up shapes. So I'm gonna do kind of like a curvy shape like this. So when you're doing organic shapes, it doesn't matter what the shape is. As long as there are curves in the shape, that's kind of one of the big defining features of organic geometric, straight lines and points, organic curvy free form. That means you're kind of just like drawing whatever. And I'm connecting one to the other so that they're all kind of fit together almost like a puzzle these usually are harder to cut out though curvy lines can be a little harder than straight lines so think about your cutting skills are you really good at cutting with your scissors if you are you can do any shape you want but if you have a little trouble with cutting you might want to stick with some geometric some straight lines so I'm going to keep doing some interesting shapes here and some shapes just some interesting curvy shapes and I think I'll leave that piece right there so I've drawn lines over the entire piece of cardboard geometric and organic and before I cut these pieces out, like I said, you could just cut them out like now, or you could start doing patterns on each of the pieces with markers, crayons, or color pencils, or with just a Sharpie. If you don't have any bright colors, you could do stripes, polka dots, zigzags. That could look really cool. Or you can get some paint out and you could do some painting. I'm going to do a little bit of sort of everything just so you can see what different things look like. Um, but I'm going to speed through it so it goes a little quicker.
So as you can see, I colored some of these pieces with different shades of watercolor. Remember, um, I did have that video on the last project, and I will have a separate video posted as well in case you didn't get to see that video, um, demonstrating how you can make paint out of water-based markers, so washable markers. Um, so if you don't have watercolor and you really wish you did, you could do the same type of thing, but using regular markers and foil. Um, water and brushes. I have a separate video for that, but I decided to do a little bit of both of the different ways you could do this. So one is just to color the pieces, either solid with one color, with any material you feel like it, crayon, color pencil, oil pastel, marker, or you can paint in your shapes using watercolor or tempera or anything like that. Watercolor is going to make it um, warp the least so you can sort of see that my cardboard is curving do you see how it's kind of like curved right now that's how it's curved uh, that's because it's wet because of the wetness it's causing the edge of the cardboard to create a curve shape instead of being flat and straight like it should be so when you are working on this and you're letting it dry you want to make sure you're laying it flat to dry you might even want to put something um, especially if it doesn't feel like when I touch it it feels damp, like wet, but I'm not getting any watercolor on my hand. There's no paint coming off on my hand. So this would be a good time where I could take something. Oh, I got a little bit right there. But um, as long as it's not coming on your hand like this, and as long as it's not something you really care about, if you have something that's heavy, like these are some um, shake things, I could take this and set it right on top and let it uh, help it to dry flat. That's something else you could do if you're concerned that it's going to stay kind of bulgy and warpy and kind of weird shaped. So um, that is with the watercolor if you're painting. You could do that for the entire thing or you could just do it for certain pieces or not at all. Let me show you the other thing you can do. And again, I'm going to do this kind of quickly. I'm going to be using markers, but I do have some oil pastels kicking around. I might do a little with that too. So I'm going to do some patterns somewhere. I'm going to color it in. I'm going to try a bunch of different things. Sometimes I'll color on top. Sometimes I'll color on these empty spaces. I just want to see what else I can do. So stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, um, <clears throat> I filled in everything. Um, I tried a lot of different things. You don't have to do as many different things as I did. You could just pick one thing and stick with it. Um, but like you might notice already, when I colored things with marker, it almost looks identical to what I painted. So you almost can't tell the difference between painting what was painted and what is marker. They look super, super similar. So I would not worry if you don't have paint you could easily do this with marker plus you don't have to worry about it um, getting all warpy and curving as much usually when you use marker it doesn't do that as much um, but still you're not going to want to do any cutting or anything that until this really is dry so when you touch it if it feels damp at all or if it feels a little cold to the touch usually that means it's um, drying still there's still moisture in it trying to get out so you're not going to want to do any cutting until that's done um, so you could just do solid colors like I did you could leave them just all brown. You could do them brown with some of these black designs that I drew on top of the brown. You could do um, just designs with color on the brown like I have here where I have sort of this purpley color on top. You can do all sorts of wild rainbow colors or you could do a theme like I just decided to go with the colors that are on this side, which is purples and yellows and oranges, I wanted to keep the same colors because I wanted the two sides to sort of match a little bit, and that's just a choice I made. So you can do that. Um, think of any pattern that you can think of that you think might look would look cool. Repeated if you feel like doing patterns, or like I said, you could have them all be solid colors. It's a hundred percent up to you how you want to do your designs. So I'm going to leave some blank, some with patterns. I'm going to do all sorts of different things just so I have a lot of variety because I want a little bit of everything. And then when I am done, um, I will be letting this dry for just maybe, 
I don't know, I'm gonna probably leave it for 10 minutes or so, and then I'll come back and check on it. And if it still needs more, more time, I'll give it more time. Otherwise, at that time, I will start cutting. So I'll be back with you in just a minute.